So warts are actually a viral infection. They are all the most effective ways to improve mitochondrial health. We'll tell you the easiest, cheapest way is exercise. All of us will start to get a decline in eyesight as we age. It's continued to make my joint pain better and better and better. Colostrum is what's made, it's basically a superfood that's produced by all mammals in their first 48 to 72 hours after giving birth. Welcome to our Q&A highlights. Q&A sessions are recorded every month and our enhanced members get an exclusive opportunity to ask questions from one of Cellular Medicine's brightest minds, Dr. Elizabeth Yurth. Get a chance to ask your questions by becoming our enhanced member at bli.academy slash memberships. You also get access to our content library full of tips, articles, videos, lectures, previous live Q&A sessions, and more. Next question's for David. David asked if I've seen any complications from a patient using pentacin polysulfate or xylosol for osteoarthritis for a long period of time, meaning six months or more. Personally, I've been on pentacin polysulfate pretty much for over two years now. It's continued to make my joint pain better and better and better. I couldn't do anything without my knee braces on. I can pretty much do everything now, even without my knee braces. It's pretty dramatic to me. I would say I don't even think about my knees anymore much. So, you know, I think that that's, it's been a dramatic change and it's just been incrementally slowly, slowly, slowly over time. We haven't had people on long-term xylosol yet. We have had animals on long-term penicillin and they've done very well without any significant side effects. What we do know is that the oral medication over an extended period of time was associated when doses sort of reached a threshold limit with an, in, an interesting retinopathy, so a damage to the retina in the eye, and which is worrisome. But we would probably never, even if we were on this drug for a long, 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 long time, but the dosing we're using as an injectable form, see those changes. It is not really even included as a warning in the black box warning when this comes available as a drug as xylosol. It's not really in there as a black box warning like it is on the oral form. So I think we're pretty safe with it. Can I promise that for 100% certainty since we haven't been using this drug for 30 years? No, I can't. I'm right now, now sort of willing, at least to myself, and I think pretty confident with my patients that if this is a game-changing drug for osteoarthritis, joint gel injections for the treatment of osteoarthritis. So first of all, Doug, I'm actually not sure what gel treatment you're talking about but I'm assuming that it's one of the visco supplements like Synvis, OrthoVis, Hyokin. So these are injections that we usually do anywhere from one injection, depending on which brand it is, to one injection a week for, you know, for a few weeks. They're designed, they're basically hyaluronic acid and they're basically designed, they're sort of a lubricant agent that you know, is supposed to help knee arthritis pain and hip arthritis pain. The, the problem is they don't really work. So yes, they're widely used, Yes, insurance actually pays for them, but biggest study ever done just got completed and it actually looked back at a huge amount of data. The final statement of that study, that strong conclusive evidence indicates that visco supplements lead to a very small reduction in pain compared with placebos, but the difference was less than minimally clinical significant between the two groups. And there was strong conclusive evidence that visco supplements were associated with increased risk of serious adverse events compared with placebo. I would say if that's what you're speaking to, I would argue that they're not time proven. In fact, they're time disproven procedure. The most effective ways to improve mitochondrial health. We'll tell you the easiest, cheapest way is exercise. And we know that there's two types of exercise. One is short burst training and weightlifting. And the other is zone two training. So it's longer training. Basically, it's that exercise at a pace where you could you could sit there and talk to your friend while you're walking up your mountain, but you wouldn't really want to. You're not dying out of breath. You could talk to somebody, but you're not going to be carrying on this casual conversation with them. That's sort of the zone two training. At least once a week, you, you're doing a, a longer training in that zone two we know is important for mitochondrial health. And then in between time, doing that short burst hit training we know is important for mitochondrial health. Other things, cold therapy either cold plunges or cryotherapy, really beneficial for mitochondrial biogenesis as is saunas. So infrared sauna, really super helpful for mitochondrial function. So those are some, some kind of the simple things that you can do, but I'll add mod C, right? So four times a year cycling mod C to improve mitochondrial biogenesis. How about ketones? Ketones also really important for mitochondrial health. And then I love that urolithin A Urolithin A, in, in, even in high-level athletes, has been shown to improve endurance, improve athletic performance. That's because it really does enhance mitochondrial function, enhances our 
ATP production. So urolithin A, I actually just started taking colostrum product called Armra. I'm pretty enthused to see what it does. You know, so I've kind of really just gotten a little bit more into this colostrum as a, as a beneficial entity. And I think the studies are really mounting about colostrum. Colostrum is what's made, it's basically a superfood that's produced by all mammals in their first 48 to 72 hours after giving birth. So humans, cows, all mammals, first thing that happens is they take colostrum, they make, make colostrum. And that's why it's so important for a baby to suckle on the breast right after birth and continuous because they're getting that colostrum, which is full of all of these things that they need to build immunity and health and growth and a healthy brain. So that's why it's really, really important in those first few hours and days of life. To date, there's about 5,000 published studies showing the benefits of colostrum and its ability to optimize health really at all stages of life. So if we look at those of us whose immune systems maybe were wiped out by autoimmune diseases or, or, you know, or viruses, can you restore that using colostrum? Probably can certainly help, right? So basically by using colostrum, you can actually get some pretty significant benefits. Now, obviously getting human colostrum, not so easy. So we usually use bovine colostrum. Interestingly, um, you know, bovine colostrum actually has more immune modulating factors than even human colostrum. So it actually has some really, really good benefits. There was a good study that I looked at that actually showed that using colostrum was three times as effective as a flu vaccine in presenting in preventing flu. So it certainly has kind of pretty significant benefits. You know, one of the problems is when you heat any of these things up, you're going to destroy some of the immune modulated benefits. So it should help gut um, repair the epithelial lining. It should help immune function. There's, I think it's a beneficial thing to add to the regimen. Again, I just take two little scoops of it. I add it to my protein shake in the morning. Lene says that she gets warts in the summer. Any thoughts about warts in general? So warts are actually a viral infection. They are all you know, we always start to think about human papillomavirus or HPV causing you know cervical cancer and genital warts. These are all HPV viruses. They're all human papillomavirus. So if you get a wart on your hand, you get a wart on your foot, these are all HPV viruses. We all get exposed to them. We don't all get recurrent warts. So basically when we get the recurrent warts, it's because that virus keeps reactivating. Okay. It's a hard virus to eradicate. So what can we do? I mean, it's all over the place. We're going to be exposed to them all over the place, shaking hands, turning doorknobs, typing on keyboards. So we have to figure out how do we get the immune system better, right, to keep this virus sort of in check. So a couple of sort of points there. And when we're seeing that, what is going wrong with your immune system? Are you lacking hormones? Are you lacking nutrients? Where is the immune system going to arrive? And then using things like spermidine. What peptide or nutrient will improve eyesight? So great question, because I'll all of us will start to get a decline in eyesight as we age. Are there ways that we can preserve eye health? I think the answer is maybe not completely, but yes. So there's a couple of approaches that are pretty simple. So one is using something called N-acetylcarnosine. And N-acetylcarnosine is a very specific type of carnosine that when applied as an eye drop, it can actually get through the aqueous humor of the eye and it acts as a basically a bioidentical molecule to reduce free radicals, stop oxidative stress, and to prevent some of the lens glycosylation that is actually contributing to some of the visual changes that occur as we age, as well as cataracts and other things like that. So I think everybody as they age or who has having problems with dry eyes or things like that should be using N-acetylcarnosine eye drops, and they come in, you can just buy them over the counter called Can-C eye drops. So C-A-N-C.